welcome back for another day. We are on your snatch prerequisites and we are talking about the kettlebell clean racked position today. So for the kettlebell clean, this is going to be your movement that gets the bell where you can hold it, all right? Where you've probably seen people hold kettlebells up here and that's what the clean movement does. Whether we start it from the floor or we start it swinging, it's gonna get it into this racked position so that maybe that's the movement that you're doing or maybe you're moving on to another movement here like overhead pressing or swinging this bell. So it's a very important movement and it's the one that gets a lot of flack. It's the one that's misunderstood. In my opinion, it's my favorite move, but it gets all this hate because a lot of people don't properly execute it and they end up banging, banging, banging their wrists and that hurts. And people don't wanna do things that hurts. It, it's totally understandable. So how do we clean up the clean so that it feels good for you, you wanna do the movement and it's not a hindrance when you're going to go ahead and move on to other movements. That's the first thing. The second reason why this is so, so, so important is because the clean is a huge prerequisite to the snatch. The kettlebell snatch mirrors the clean way more than it mirrors the kettlebell swing. If you think about a kettlebell swing, the bell's out here, if you think about a snatch, you're zipping the bell up close to your body. And if you think about, sorry, if you think about a kettlebell clean, you're zipping the bell up close to your body. And if you think about a snatch, you're keeping the bell still pretty close to your body. The elbow is just slightly more out than it would be in the clean. And that's why this clean is so important because it's the first time that you're learning to keep the bell close to your body when you're executing a movement. And also, the hand positioning from when you pick the bell up to when it lands in across the palm for that uh, racked position is the same hand positioning and smoothness and not death gripping the bell that you need for the kettlebell snatch. So I want those two to be very, very connected in your mind going forward. So let's talk about the kettlebell swing and just build up to it here. So the first thing that I do wanna talk about is going to be, uh, we did that single deadlift yesterday. This is gonna be called the gunslinger, okay? So you would set up just how we did for that single deadlift where we had our hand here, and then we went up into your kettlebell deadlift. Here, you're gonna get the same amount of hip hinge going, the same setup, and when you pull up and away, you're going to end here. So what's happening is I'm holding the bell with my elbow pulled back and I caught the bell here. So it's rotating from here when it's down here, pulling my elbow back, landing here. So that's drill number one for the kettlebell clean. And the reason that we do that is to show you that when you're doing a kettlebell clean, you don't want your elbow to go up and over. I'm exaggerating this, but this is what a lot of people do very slightly. And then the kettlebell, boom, smacks against your wrist. You can see how that's problematic. When we do this, we allow for a moment where the bell's gonna transfer, transfer from our fingertips into this diagonal position, okay? So, from here to here, here to here. So drill number one, try about five reps of your gunslinger, ending in this plank position. Then do five more and add on this rotation part at the top. So we're pulling, rotating, boom. And this is your racked position. Pull, rotate, that's it, all right? Now, that can be a little bit confusing. We've got the elbow back part and we understand that it's going into the racked position, but how can we tie this all into one? So I want you to do a little half kneeling cheat clean where you have this hooked grip. So I'm gonna use two hands here to hold this bell so that it doesn't fall out of my hands. But really, if my right hand's working, the bell is lying like a hook grip on my fingertips here. And I'm gonna go from here, and I'm never gonna close my fist. You never close 
and death grip the bell. From here to here, here to here. And all I'm doing is allowing this hook grip to slide over my palm and it's skipping this area and landing exactly in the diagonal that I want it to be in. So once you get that going, you can even give it a little bit of like a swing back and up. Swing back and up. And now you're learning one of the most important concepts for your kettlebell snatch, which is the ability to let the bell transfer from your hook grip where you start it and spear or spear onto that diagonal, all right? So I'm gonna get a little up close and personal, hi, and let you see this. This is that diagonal that I'm talking about right here, where the kettlebell, the corner of it, is resting between these two fingers. It's going down and across, and then it rests between my bicep and on my wrist. Now, if this angle is even just a little bit off, it can rest on your knuckle, it can rest on an uncomfortable part of your wrist. So feel free, once you're up here, to adjust it, all right? And I want an up and down verticalness. So from my elbow to the top of my fingertips, there's a straight line. And then I just close that to really, you know, let it sink in. But this is that end racked position that we're practicing with that half kneeling movement. So really up and down vertical, you're not death gripping it. You could easily lift your fingertips and they'd point towards the sky and your elbow would point down towards the ceiling. All right, getting a little tired there. So those are two drills, elbow back and then letting it rotate so that it can land in the racked position comfortably, all right? And from there, you're gonna put those two drills together and end up with the top of your kettlebell clean. Now, when you do do that, you're gonna be in the racked position and a few things are gonna happen. We need to make sure this wrist is stable with your fingers and your elbow. We don't wanna see it pulling out like this because this is not good for the wrist and the amount of pressure that we're putting it in. This, we sometimes see if the bells are heavy. So I would say try to go a little lighter and groove the parallel version first before you rely on kind of bringing the weight into your chest because then we're really relying on that chest and different muscles here than we would be if it was vertical. And then this is just cheating. This is when you see a lot of people trying to do overhead presses at high reps and they don't wanna bring the bell all the way down. So they'll just rest it to kind of give themselves a break. But this is not anything in the hard style kettlebell world. So eliminate that from your brain, all right? Oh, and the last one we see a lot is elbows up like the chicken wangs. And this is because it's usually resting uncomfortably on the forearm. So by doing this, you're giving yourself more of a table, some more leverage there. Um, again, something we likely wanna avoid. So, stepping it back, if we put everything together, we have the gunslinger. We have the gunslinger rotation. We have from standing or kneeling, a cheat clean. And then we have zipping the bell up, keeping the elbow back, allowing it to spear through the hand, the full clean. The only other comment here is that it is still a hip dominated movement. So you really wanna think as you're pulling the bell up and bringing the elbow back, spearing the hand through, pushing the floor, away. The force is up and down vertical and you're ending in this beautiful tight plank. And in order to do that, you really got to even think, maybe even think about it like jump squatting off the ground, but you're not going anywhere. You're just having that full hip extension, that full hip explosion. All right. A couple of things to look out for here. The first, like we talked about, would be don't death grip the bell. Don't hold on to it so tightly that it has no choice but to flip over instead of allowing your hand 
to spear through. Remember, we're going hook grip to diagonal. The second one would be forgetting about your hip hinge, forgetting about your setup, and really maybe starting with the bell out here, maybe having your elbow come up and over, right? Not pretty. So we really wanna make sure the bell's still starting at our ankle bone, the elbow staying in and tucked, and we're thinking about that nice setup. And the last is the breath. Breath is always important. And on every single one of these, you're going to exhale when you reach or while you're doing your hip extension and the end of your exhale is at the top of that hip extension. So letting out that air slowly. Big inhale to start. Letting it out slowly. That's everything about the kettlebell clean. I would love to see yours, so send me a video, if you haven't already, of your kettlebell clean. Just do about five reps facing sideways, and then show me your racked position from the front, and that's it, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in today to the snatch prerequisite that is the kettlebell clean and racked position. I'm betting that you nailed this, and I can't wait for tomorrow.